Welcome to episode 227, recorded at the David A. Howe Public Library. We talk book news, author news, and literary news, and it is the end of the year. Decades. Yeah. It's over. And it's the All the Books show. I'm Nick Gunning. What did I say? You just jumped right to it. You said, welcome to episode 227, where oh, we I talk. Oh, I didn't say the title. No, you didn't. Oh. End of year. Not a good end way year, to baby. not a good way to end the year, I guess. <laughs> if you don't even know you yeah, don't even know what the show's what called. called anymore. This is the All the Book Show though. I'm Eric Michaels. And I'm Nick Gunning. And today we're gonna be we're gonna be doing a deep dive into the year twenty nineteen. Mm-hmm. That was, was that a, like, a newspaper? No, that, <laughs> <laughs> that was like the <laughs> I can almost remember. Uh, yeah. you know, wow, that is an like, intense almost remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna be looking into it's twenty <laughs> twenty nineteen and Ooh. see seeing what some of our favorite things were. Mm-hmm. Our favorite foods, ah. our favorite places to visit. Mm-hmm. Is that not what you prepared? My favorite foods and places to visit. <laughs> yeah, in 2019. So, what are my choices then? Seattle. Yeah, I guess so. Saratoga Springs. Yeah. Home. Yeah. Haverhill. Yeah, three. Haverhill, Massachusetts. Three spots. Shout out to Haverhill, Massachusetts. Yeah, really. Did you do any good travel this year? I mean, I was just I kidding. Just but now, three places. But now I'm kind of, those are the three places. I mean, we went to Seattle. Okay. Went to Saratoga Springs. Yeah. So went we, to Haverhill, Massachusetts. As you'll recall, did I go south? Do you remember if I went south? I don't think this you did. Year? I don't think you did. Are you sure? No, I'm not Surely sure. I went to I'm North Carolina. Sure. I let's see. Uh, my family went to Maryland, met our friends down there in Maryland, and hung out for a weekend. And we mm-hmm. did an Airbnb. That was pretty cool. Okay, we liked that. Yeah. The Seattle trip for the ALA conference. Yeah. Uh, I loved seeing the Space Needle and that Pop Culture Museum. I still haven't gotten over it. Yeah, we went to the. I don't remember what it's called, but Seattle Pop pop culture museum yeah and saw some pretty amazing Seattle st- pop pop <laughs> we really saw some pretty amazing stuff yeah though. i know you could get over just see like it was uh it was like there's Lindy's jacket yeah yeah spock's original uniform yeah, Luke's, Star Trek Luke's lightsaber like, i mean it yeah. was just like hoverboards from back to the yeah. future it was, it was amazing it wasn't it like spock's uniform but from the original yeah from from pilot like, with yeah it was Pike? crazy it was insane yeah couldn't believe it so that was fun and then saratoga springs where we ran into our friend Amy Kuhn, who's joined us a couple of times on this podcast. Yeah, talk about bad cover art. Bad cover art. That's yeah. right. So we got to get Amy back on the show. Uh, let's just Is dive right in. <laughs> no, it's oh, not. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what I've done, and you see how it compares to what you've done. So I, this was hard. I went out and got my, my top five favorite Oh, books. we're just jumping right into it. Oh. What, no, you, okay. Did you want no. to talk more? No, that's fine. I was just not prepared. Oh, okay. Well, I, was, I was just telling you. Here's how I set it up. My okay. list is rough. Okay. Okay. I picked my top five uh, books that I read. Again, these are not books that necessarily came out in 2019. These are just my favorite books I read in the year. Uh-huh. I did regular books, graphic novels, uh-huh. kids books, oh. and then I've got some favorite movies and TV. What did you do? Uh, Similar? Well, the only books from 2019 I read was Artemis. I don't think you're listening. They don't have to be books I know, from 2019. so I did what you did. Oh, cool. But okay. also, I didn't have a lot of luck with books this year. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Uh-huh. It, when we've done this in the past, it's been really hard to like narrow them down. Yeah. And I mean, this isn't a dig. Off on... air, I'll tell you why I think the pro- what the problem really is. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. If it's we had a podcast, if, if we had like a Patreon, we could be yeah. like to find out, you know, but <laughs> no. we don't. We don't. I, I've just had to read We're a, a public lot of stuff library. For, the, uh, for book clubs and this podcast. Okay. <laughs> no, All right. I'm just Let's, saying, you like, know what? <laughs> so like I, I fit in like some of my like sci-fi readings and stuff, but, uh, Luckily, like the kids' books I had to read for like book clubs here, yeah, are usually pretty good. Oh, okay. It's uh, every now and then you're like, let's read the Institute together. It's just like, no. Oh. Yeah, I'm a, I'm the real villain of your story. Oh, that was 2019. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that was crap. That's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> Eric almost fell out of his yeah, seat. Yeah, this is the second time I've fallen know, off this chair tripping. today, and you haven't done a thing. I know. <laughs> you haven't sorry. even like att- pretended right. like, oh hey, are you okay? You're right. To speak to your point, though, I. Uh-huh. I also usually the struggle for me is to narrow it down to five. This year mm-hmm. I was like, I guess that counts. Yeah, I guess I'd have to count that one. Yeah. So why don't you start? I've got uh, a list wasn't ready. A super strong showing. Okay. All right. Um. Well, I'm gonna give you one of my one of my top five. Let's see. You know, I'm gonna do kids books because you don't care about that. No. But... Do your top five vinyls. <laughs> my top five vinyls. I didn't do that. I should have. Oh. You I prepared? Should've. No, I'm okay. not. No, I can't. <laughs> I can't throw that out. Let me start with my favorite kids books. So these are mostly books that I. Well, they're all books that I read to my son. Uh, his probably my son's favorite this year was Tiger versus Nightmare by Emily Who was your Tetri. favorite son this year? Well, I only have the one, so oh. he, he was. Mm-hmm. Um, Tiger versus Nightmare, Nightmare by Emily Tetri. So this was up for an award. I I want to say it was a it was a Seuss uh, Geisel Award. I think is what it was. But um, 
This is all about a little tiger who's having <laughs> trouble at night. Aww. And uh, it's got a little mini monster who was originally there to scare her, the uh-huh. tiger. But then they sort of team up to go after this nightmare. Tigers are nocturnal. They can hmm. see pretty well in the interesting. dark. Interesting, interesting. Okay, that was not a part of this book. <laughs> okay. But it's it's in like comic book panels. It's mm-hmm. in comic book style. And it's really just about kids being afraid at night. And so my son really loved this book. And it was also sort of helpful for those times that he was creeped out. So again, that's Tiger vs. Nightmare by Emily Tetri. Why are you always creeping out your kid? It's not my fault. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the ghost in the closet in the past oh. month? He he ha- he does make mention to things like that, and it does freak me out sometimes. <laughs> Freaks you out? It does. So then you have to read Tiger versus he, Nightmare. He'll say something, and I'm like, "Oh, that's silly. That's not scary." And uh-huh. then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "I'm closing my eyes at night, picturing the monster in his closet." Uh, the day you begin, another one by Jacqueline Woodson. So this is uh, it's a nice picture book. Conception? No, oh. sort of. <laughs> sort it's of. It's just about no. It's just about this little girl sort of you know getting comfortable in her own skin and meeting new people. Oh, and, yeah. and all that. I just thought it was a really nice, well done book. The day we began is when the little girl gets comfortable in somebody else's skin, and then there's a ghost in your son's head. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Red light, green lion was another favorite. So this is all a book Red about. Light. It doesn't. Green light. It doesn't go the direction that you think it's going to go. Right. So one page will be like red light, and it'll say green light, and then it'll lion, you have to turn yeah. the page, and it'll be like lion. Right. So it killed. Like him. if I was like, dude, you're getting Adele's new album. Exactly. Yeah. Funny. Just like that. Mm-hmm. And so my son was all about it. He loved this book. All so right. That's by Candace Ryan. Does he like Adele? Uh, he might. He's he's much more hip than me when it comes <laughs> to music. Let me Twenty one pilots. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's see. What else we got? All Are Welcome by Alexandra Penfold. So this is this is one about um, this is really just about uh, embracing diversity and in, in the the things that make us different, the things that make us the same. Uh, excellent picture book, great illustrations, and it just sort of drives that point home without you know beating you over the head with it. And I just thought it was a really well mm-hmm. done book. My son really enjoyed it. Finally, in my top five, I chose Tough Guys Have Feelings Too by Keith Negley. And again, this is this is one about um, you know helping kids just accept the feelings that they have. I cry every day. Do you every day? Well, this is about tough guys, so. Oh, uh, <laughs> J.K. Uh, but no, it's really just about sort of helping kids accept and, and deal with the emotions that they have. Huh? And so this one is is focusing on like you know stereotypical tough guys. So it'd be like superheroes and, and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Uh, and just going through and showing that like everybody has feelings and that's fine. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was just a really nice. You can also show him Tobey Maguire's Spider Man movies. Yeah, he's a tough guy. He's true. always crying. You mess with one of us. No, that's a different character. Oh, though. sorry. Yeah, Tobey Maguire's an ugly crier. He's his listen. Uh-huh. Tobey Maguire's facial expressions in those. Show movies. Show me a pretty crier. Show me somebody who looks gorgeous while crying. I'm not saying gorgeous, uh-huh. but Tobey Maguire has some of the worst facial expressions right. of any human. When he's wow. trying to hold that train back, come on. Those faces he makes. Okay. I can't, I can't All right. even think well, about Well, I'm not going to tear you down to build Toby Maguire up. So oh, okay. <laughs> well, <then laughs> appreciate this bad, mercy. You think I make bad facial expressions? No, I just think... <laughs> I think part of me okay. wants to attack you oh. the same way a lioness attacks a gazelle to defend Toby Maguire. Oh. Lionesses attack gazelles to defend Toby <laughs> Maguire. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> He was great in October Sky. <laughs> that's uh, that's Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, you want to you want to give me? I one? meant the ice storm. <laughs> Let's do graphic novels. Give me one of your favorite. One gra- of Ang Lee's <laughs> earlier films. <laughs> <laughs> give me one of your favorite graphic novels from 2019. Are you? Oh, look at you! I got yeah, a little post. I got, I got a little, little post-it post-it note. notes. That's so cute. Uh, 2019 was. Uh, I started a few. Okay, I read Black Hammer. You remember that? I do. I don't remember yeah. what it was about. Was that a series or just a standoff? No, that was. It's a couple of standoffs Jeff that Lemire, are right. a series. It's very confusing. Yeah, I haven't finished it because there's just all these spinoffs. There's too much. Anyway, uh, a couple of superheroes from the modern day get sent and or get trapped in this universe where they're like stuck in this small town, um, and. They just can't get back, and so it's just kind of one of those character studies. One of the characters is a uh, one of the characters is like a Shazam character. Okay. So she was aging, and when she said the magic word, she would turn back. She would turn into like a younger girl oh. with superpowers, like a Mary Marvel. Sure. But she's like a kid instead, and she's stuck in that form. Okay. Even though she's like sixty. Interesting. And so she has to like pretend to be a kid. There's an alien who's 
uh, who's not welcomed uh, in the in the town. It's just just these different characters uh, ruining each other's lives. I've read some of his other. I've read. I mean, of course, I love his uh, Teen Titans Earth One. He wrote Old Man Logan. Old Man Logan. Yeah, but especially bit. that Teen Titans. I love that. Yeah. Uh, I also read Kill or Be Killed by Ed Brubaker. That was one that like I just kind of ate up. I was just. Uh, I think I got the first volume for free or something. Or and what's the story with that one? Uh, guy thinks he has to kill somebody every month, or he'll be killed. Okay. Uh, due to a curse, and it might not be true. So he basically kind of becomes the Punisher. Oh. Uh, in order to stay alive, he's only going to kill bad people. But then he might also just be crazy. Okay. Uh, I also read the first two volumes of the Umbrella Academy and the third volume, but the third volume was crap. The first two were great. The first one was was very good i loved it and then i also read all the descender that like sci-fi series about a far future where a bunch of robots had up rose and then were destroyed and uh there's also a little boy robot who's trying to find his uh his old the boy he had to like take Hmm. care of his his my buddy situation kind of thing (laughs) so it's basically uh ai meets my buddy okay uh my buddy the doll from the 80s meets star wars okay yeah what was the one you said right before that one umbrella academy right 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 but that's that's high on your list. Yeah, the first volume, but not you not the like third. The third volume was crap. The, the first two volumes were good. And does the third volume pick up like exactly yeah. where the other two left? Kind off? of, yeah. Oh. But it's just you know ten years later, right? And not as good and a mess. Um, wow. nope. Yeah, but Descender was so nope good, and when it was done, I was like, I want to read Ascender now, uh-huh. which is out, but it's not in graphic form yet, as uh, far as I know. I see. So those were like the non-superhero stuff that I was like, those were good. Okay. I read some other stuff. All right. Let me give you some of mine. Do you have a list of superhero stuff that's good? Yeah. Okay. Cool. All (laughs) right. Here are my favorite graphics of the year. So I have to, of course- These are all books that came out in 2019. No, Eric, you're not listening. Nick's demands. I've never said that. (laughs) Some of my favorite graphics this year, and this was a little harder. I actually did read quite a few graphics that were right at the top of this list. Mm. So it's hard to, this was hard to, Mm. to pare down. But I had to give it, give it to uh, Invincible by Robert Kirkman. I finally finished the last uh, the last two volumes of Invincible. I sort of put it off for a long time. I was waiting till it came out in the big compendium. Mm. So there's three compendiums that uh, that are every issue of Invincible, right. which is pretty cool. So I was waiting for it to come out in that format. But I've been reading this series for years, and I've talked about it many times on the podcast. But it's just a really exceptional superhero series just uh-huh. its own it's its own thing it's yeah. not you know marvel dc if, if you're not familiar with it it just it's an image comic uh all written by robert kirkman and excellent mm-hmm. i just i really liked it so yeah. um after you know 150 ish episodes issues um <laughs> i wasn't called a comic book <laughs> every face tv i just wasn't sure if they were really going to be able to bring it home if it was going to feel like a conclusion if it was going to be satisfying and, and they really did i, I got to give hey, it to them right. because it was really good and and really uh Really worked well for me. Do you know how far along you are in this series? I don't. I'd have to get on Goodreads and like really research it. Well, guess what? I've got all the compendiums now, so oh, all so right. I can, I can from hook you, you up. <laughs> so that was one. Um, let's see uh, another one that I this was this is kind of a placeholder, or, or it's sort of I've chosen this one as to kind of represent this whole arc. But the final days of Superman by Peter J. Tomasi is. Uh, is the culmination of this this long arc that began as part of Superman's New Fifty Two era uh, that that I've sort of just called the Truth the Truth Saga the Truth era yeah yeah and it's just it it spreads out over multiple series you know Action Comics Superman Superman Wonder Woman Batman Batman Superman <laughs> um, and you just follow this character uh, all the way through mm-hmm. and I just think it's excellent it's just some of the best Superman that I've read in a really really long time and, and this I, this question is just for me really but is yeah. this new 52 superman it is okay it okay. is new 52 superman and when like classic superman proper takes his place i keep feeling like well but i kind of like the truth yeah like you that him. superman so yeah. took um, him forever yeah i would really like to have this like this is one that i would like to own have it in my little hands right but it's hard <laughs> because it just it's so many issues it's so many like random issues spread across mm-hmm. so many different ones it would be really hard to collect and even in uh like graphic novel or trade form it's kind of hard to follow but um i just love this whole thing and i thought the final days of superman was a perfect like capstone on that run uh which we do have that here in our collection so that was oh, yeah. top notch for me sorry you talking about invincible made me real remember that uh walking dead like ended yeah this year and mm-hmm. i haven't read the last volume oh. and it's in our system so wow. i need to put put a hold on that quick yeah, so i can sure finish do. it by the end of you the year sure do 
Um, what else do I got here? Oh, this is this is a more recent one that I've read. Uh, but Chip Zdarsky's four volume Peter Parker: The Spectacular Spider Man series. Superhero. I well, I know. I oh, okay. I didn't put these <laughs> limitations on myself. <laughs> um, Peter Parker: The Spectacular Spider Man. I just I loved it. I thought it was so good. How does he look when he cries? Four volumes. Great. Oh. <laughs> four volumes. There's a time travel story in there. Really good use of J. Jonah Jameson. It's funny. Mm -hmm. It feels like it feels like he just got Spider-Man just exactly right. Mm -hmm. So I read that whole arc and I got to pick up Spider-Geddon sometimes. Got Spider-Man exactly next. right. So I imagine that's a uh, front page by tomorrow morning. I don't get it. Because I want, I want a picture of Spider-Man ah, on the front okay. page by tomorrow morning. All right. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't no, have no, a no. big cigar and a flat top <laughs> no, on my head. No, I think that, that would have done it. <laughs> um, I mean, Star Trek versus Transformers. Look, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to apologize. Uh -huh. uh, I loved this. I mm -hmm. thought it was so good. Did they good. ever say Optimus Prime Directive? No, I don't think they did. Oh, mistake. But Spock did mind melt with Optimus Prime. Nice. And a Transformer did transform into, into the, the Enterprise. Enterprise yeah. So, yep. I mean, yeah. what else are you going to do? I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't know what else I can say. Yeah. It's... It's yeah. a it's a team up of the '60s animated yeah. Star Trek, which I love, <laughs> and '80s Transformers, Transformers yeah. together. And sometimes with these crossovers, like Star Trek: Planet of the Apes, just didn't didn't quite capture it. Mm -hmm. This did nailed it. All right. This was just a <laughs> <laughs> was perfect. <laughs> okay, I loved it. Would, th would you ever read this? Do you have any interest in reading that? I might check it out sometime, but. My my need to read Star Trek graphics is not so great. Right, but I mean this is this is an exception. <laughs> it's true. You need to make it. I did read Star Trek Green Lantern. Both volumes? Just volume one. That's a it's a pretty good it's a yeah. pretty good one two punch okay. there. I like that quite a bit. Uh, and what else? I don't know. Oh, and finally, uh Batman Nightwalker by Marie Lou. Nightwalker. Uh the the graphic novel adaptation Nightwalker. of Marie Lou's novel. Now you've read this book. You read Nightwalker. I read the book. And like thumbs up? Did you yeah, like I it? I gave it a thumbs up. I thought I I loved this graphic novel. I thought it was excellent. The, the art was really good. Um, I I read it in advanced reader's copy, and it was all yeah. black and white. We have it now. Yeah. Do we? The graphic. Okay. I wasn't sure if if it's full color, and my early copy was black and white, or if it's meant to be black and white. Do you know? I'd have to okay. look. Okay. Well, regardless, I thought the black and white really suited it, and I think it's it tells the story really well. Sometimes when you're reading these, uh, like he's not quite Batman yet kind mm -hmm. of stories, they just they just can't. Yeah, they just don't work. Lauren yeah. Miracle's Catwoman. I knew book that was is, coming. He's a perfect yeah. example, but uh, this really did. So uh, I don't know if I'll go back and read the novel now. Probably uh -huh. not. But no. uh, I really like this. So nice. that's that's my top five graphic novels of 2019. Eat your heart out. I don't have a top five. Okay, graphic novels mainly because right. this was. I mean, I this was the year that uh, I finally started filling in the gaps of some of the X Men comics yeah, that I had. I right. don't remember if you. Remember where oh, I, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Uh, started at volume like seven of yeah. Essential X Men and went up to eleven. Uh, not, I didn't take the dial up to eleven. Yeah, I just went up to volume eleven. Right, of Essential I understand. X. So I read all of those, and then I also like filled in a bunch of gaps with like I read uh, all the X twenty three. Was this the year of the Punisher? No, that was oh. that was a year or two ago. That was hard. Yeah, what? that was oh, hard for you me. You survived. You were no, fine. I didn't. That was hard. This for was me. the year of X Men and some GI Joe and uh, ending ending with some Star Wars. You know, I failed to mention any of the Green Lantern that I read, and that oh, was you like did read a lot. Green Lantern yeah. was my superhero of the year. That's I read true. Yeah, so much year Green Lantern. Lantern. So that was crazy. Um, I did love it. I I there wasn't one that really mm -hmm. like transcended, but I really liked going through and just right. reading every Green Lantern that I'd missed. You so know what? Anyway, sorry. Uh, I read like six of the Punisher Max hardcovers this year. This year. I yeah, thought so. so. I didn't think it was of... that far away. But so I read... You're the... a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I read all those like essential... Like, so I finished Clish Claremont's run on X-Men. I read um, a bunch of the... Um, like X Factor and New Mutants that tied in with that stuff. I read some of the X Force that happened after that and kept going for a little bit and then i also kind of caught up so now i'm at the post uh inhumans versus x-men and stuff so i you know you love the inhumans no i don't you think they're great you think no. they're the perfect stand-in for the x-men stop anyway i just read a lot of x-men had a good time doing it uh, i also finished the ultimate universe as it was mm, and not, as i recall you were not pleased no with that i was resolution. not okay so but yeah i i mean it was only a couple of months ago but i still like look fondly of just like Reading all those old X Men comics during mm -hmm. the summer on my yep. my little app, having a slice of pizza, reading about the X Men in the Savage Land. That or, sounds pretty good. good. Yeah, sounds it was good. A good time. 
Um, the the reading the Green Lanterns was like a full time job. Yeah, I know because it was like okay, now this issue jumps mm-hmm. to Green Lantern Corps, and that jumps to Red Lanterns, <laughs> and that jumps to yep. New Guardians. It was oh. You know Complex. What? I should mention Grant Morrison's uh, We Three, which is also very dark and great. So uh, I, because what happened was I was reading all those X Men. I was like, I got to read some non superhero graphics, which happens every now and then. Mm-hmm. So that's what happened. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So I don't know what I would say. Like my favorite graphic, not my. I mean, my favorite comics this year would be those Chris Claremont X Men that I read. Okay. Especially the uh, when they're on the run. From Ooh. the run from the Marauders. Ooh. So, that does sound fun. Yeah. All right, let's let's save favorite books for a while. Let's talk Whoa. Let's talk some favorite TV. Favorite TV? Yeah. I and my wife are some of the uh less vocal people who enjoyed the last season of Game of Thrones. Oh. Including the last episode. We well, I've, we didn't I've have got, a problem with it. I've got no skin in this game, but a lot I of people were upset because they were like, uh, "You didn't show that. You just had like a character twist, and you didn't show anything leading up to that." And it's like, well, there were seven seasons, mm. seven seasons, and a last name and bloodline that makes sense. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I Game of Thrones had, was rough. It's like sixth season was like maybe fifth or sixth season were just rough watching. I did not enjoy it. I can't remember which season it was, but. Uh yeah, last season I thought it was good. I feel good. I feel closure. I don't need spinoffs or anything. So Game of Thrones ended. You think you'll ever read the books? I read the first book. I know. They're no, they're too dark. <laughs> okay. I mean the show's too dark, but like I I didn't find any of the characters likable when I read the book, and the show kind of smoothed out those edges. So okay. I I would not read the books now. Um, but I tell you what, we got rid of HBO after Game of Thrones, and yeah. now I hear Watchmen. The show Watchmen is like one of the best shows ever. Really? Yeah. It's just getting rave reviews all the time. Crazy. And the especially the last episodes. And I'm like, oh. So. What are you going to do? Yeah. Okay. We kept it long enough for my wife to watch Chernobyl. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right. And then we didn't. Yeah. I've got two on my list. Here it comes. Sort of... I, I was just ready. Uh, <laughs> okay. Here it goes. <laughs> I've got two on my What's list. What's it going to be? <laughs> which represent a pretty strong turnaround from the positions I took on the first seasons of both of these shows. Okay. Do you got any guesses? Mamma Mia the series. No. And Mamma Mia the making of the series. Both of those were wrong. <laughs> both of those were wrong. Right. You, you don't know? No. Well, Star Trek Discovery. One is Star Trek Discovery. Yeah. The first season, uh, I've just recently rewatched. Uh, my mm-hmm. wife and my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, we've been watching through... Uh, we just refinished Star Trek Discovery season one. Mm-hmm. And the thing about that first season is... It's rough? Well, it is. It is rough. It really is. And even... even They're so excited they can say the F word. I know. Even when you know what you eventually know, and you go back and you spot little things uh-huh. early on that, that bugged you, that didn't make sense, and then you can sort of see like, okay, now right. that makes more sense. It's still too long without right. giving you anything. Right. And I still think those early like five or six episodes, I just... I just don't really enjoy them. Right. Um, but I was, I was by the end of that season, like the second batch of episodes, I was pretty pleased. Nice. But season two, Anson Mount as Pike is just, he's, <laughs> he's amazing yeah. in that role. He really hey, is. Hey, is Nick not enjoying your Star Trek project? Throw in Captain Pike. Yeah. Do That's it. all he needs. I do. It helps. <laughs> yeah. It helps. So Star Trek Discovery has been great. Uh, the um, I, There's a Star Trek, a short Trek that I need to show you sometime that, okay. that'll kill you. But, uh, what? <laughs> well, it won't actually Don't kill you. threaten you. me. But Star Trek Discovery really got it back. And season two I thought was great. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it ends on a very intriguing note. So mm-hmm. I I have no idea when season three is coming out. But I'm right. eagerly anticipating that. As am I anticipating the Picard show that's coming out mm-hmm. in just a couple weeks. So I can't guess what the second show is. You can't? No. Okay, well, give me another one of yours and I'll... Oh, is it Legends? No. Um, I've always liked Legends of Tomorrow. That's that's, that's a lie. Because we were all watching it as a group. Okay. <laughs> you're right. You know what? You're right. That, that first season... That of, first season is bad. It, yeah, with... Uh, with uh, uh, What's his name? Vandal Savage oh and all of that. I mean, yeah, you're right. It's almost like... Maybe watch the pilot and then the last episode. Yeah. And then you just start the second season. Because that first season fair. is some of the hardest to get through TV in a long time. Yeah. Um, we're still on TV. Okay. Uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine was great. Uh, Good Place has been great. Uh, Barry Season 2. had You just pounded right through them. Had a lot of great uh, episodes. There was one episode that that I thought was hilarious where he had to basically go do a job. Right. 
And the whole episode was just so funny. There were Henry Winkler was hilarious. At the time. I, sh- I showed you some clips yeah. of him like freaking out about because Barry is like just kind of given a role because he's just in the right place at the right time, and everybody just cannot believe it, which gave some pretty funny uh, <laughs> reactions. Uh, and Veep ended pretty pretty yeah. well, I thought. Okay, the last season. So of Veep. so Veep is on my list. You Finish. didn't like the first season. A Veep? Well, you said it was a turnaround. No, 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 no. Just Sorry. the first one. No. Okay. There were two. There were two that I said I hated the okay. first season and came around to it. Veep is not one of them. Veep's but, on your but list, though. It's also on my okay. list. Yeah. yeah. Veep um, season, what season was it? Eight? Seven. Seven. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Pretty sure. Yeah, cool. Uh, um, yeah, I loved Veep. I mean, I love Veep all yeah. the way through, but it really it really was a very successful yeah. end yeah. because it was such... Such unlikable characters, you mm-hmm. know, like you're still kind of rooting for them in a certain way. Yeah. Like you want certain things to happen. And I don't know. I, you know, I don't know how I would have ended that show. I just had no predictions on what yeah. they were going to do. I know. And I thought that they handled it really yeah. almost perfectly. It really yeah. was very good. Uh, my wife misses the show already. I do too. Yeah. I don't have a new like Veep to binge. <laughs> That's true. That yeah. was, I'm never, a, I'm never a great binger, but Veep is one. Oh yeah. We just, we, like, we just down cruise go, through Poof. Veep. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, documentary now. Okay, the third season that came out. Oh my gosh, there were some there were some standout episodes in there. If I had to pick one, oh the uh, I showed you one, didn't I? Maybe I didn't show it. No, I showed it to my mom. I get you too confused. That's weird. <laughs> uh, there was an episode that had John Mulaney and Taryn Killam, and they were basically doing a the documentary was the making of this musical called The Co op. And it was basically, um, you know, there was that, I can't remember. That. I haven't seen it, so I, don't, I can't yeah, help it, you. It's parodying in a, a different uh, musical of a making of where they show people like working on the same song 50 times, just trying to get everything right. It's the album for the musical. But like, but one of the jokes is that the cast is told the con- the musical has been canceled right at the beginning. And then they're just like, all right, let's get recording. <laughs> so there's there's some great songs in there. I've watched that episode a few times. It's very funny. So... Uh, yeah, I, what, is, what is that sketch show that's on Netflix that has the guy who was in S- I, SNL for like? A I think day? you should leave. Yeah, yes, uh, never, that's on my list as well. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I've only seen the clips that I've, I've seen at yeah. your house, but it, uh, that so kills funny. me every time. It, it, it kind of took me a while to understand. Like, all the jokes were really just based on the. Uh, what if an awkward situation just kept getting yeah. worse, <laughs> right. and you just didn't know when you to, when to leave? Yeah, and. Yeah, I I thought it was a weird first episode, but then when I kept watching, I'm like, this is this is hilarious. Yeah. And now it's just, I just can't help but think of his like face when he's like, what? Yeah, <laughs> he's a pretty funny guy. He yeah. was in a documentary now, okay. season three, in the bowling episode, which cool. was very funny. Um, yeah, I think you should leave us on it. Look, you can, you can just list all yours after this because I my list is done after this. But I got to give a special shout out to the uh, to the absolute. Uh, dumpster fire that was season five of gotham <laughs> that God. i that i almost killed myself <laughs> watching four seasons of to yeah. catch up to and i'm usually like uh, an hour long 20 episodes yeah i did it yeah it it put me into places i never knew yeah. that existed and then season five was just talk about phoning it in they cut it down to 13 episodes so you would think you'd have more money right to do uh, oh my gosh the last episode, I guess, was okay. Okay. But I guess I could have just watched the last episode. Mm-hmm. Anyway. That's crazy, because that's not how that was marketed at all. You really thought they were going to do a whole thing. Like a no man's land. Yeah. They did nothing with it. Oh, boy. Yeah, they were like, oh, we're going to tackle zero years. It's going to be no man's land. I was like, you liars. Yeah. That's why I turned it hurt. on, because you said these things that I enjoyed. Oh, Bane was going to be... I yeah. mean, Bane, I guess, was in it. Oh. Well, I guess while we're while we're on a Batman, I'm tired of Nissa Al Ghul showing up yeah. in anything. Nobody yeah. cares about Nissa. No. Everybody, no, she's she, not. The, she's the she's the Jan Brady of the Al Ghul family. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Somebody uh, had to say it, and I'm glad it was you. <laughs> uh, one show that did come out in, in 2019 that kind of sticks with uh, what you're talking about here that I've been loving is Batwoman. Oh yeah, so Batwoman's the latest edition of the CW's Arrowverse. Is it the late? Yeah, it is the latest. Is, but like, yeah. was it's the only one that aired in 2019 right of the arrowverse because black lightning was the last edition yeah well black and isn't part of the arrowverse really of it, right but no, still yeah. cw verse yeah okay yep so it's been really good it's about mm-hmm. 10 episodes in right now i think ruby right. rose is, is an excellent lead in that you might like um, her in resident evil 6 maybe i would john wick 2 this show is uh 
I don't know. It's just a well-paced, interesting yeah. show, and it uh, a lot of the Arrowverse feels a little too samey to yeah, me. Yeah, it gets very samey. And I think that uh, the Batwoman's broken that mold a little bit. Nice. And when she's called on to inter to interact with the other characters, mm-hmm. she just brings like a weird energy that throws off the things yeah. that they would normally do. So it's early in the run, but mm-hmm. it's it's definitely been one of my like appointment TV uh, right. of of 2019. Are you waiting for like season three when there's like seven people who know her secret and they're all yeah. just standing around just in a room? In huddle. Yeah. Yep. I can't I, wait till the I'm Superman sure. show comes I'm out. I'm sure that happens, it will happen. Yeah. Yep. Well, Perry, I don't know. <laughs> this is one. I feel like you're going to make fun of me about this. I sure but, am. Um, Here it comes. Uh, New Girl. That's so old. I thought that you were going to say. Okay. It actually just ended in 2018. It's not that old. But it ended last year. But I finished that's all true. the... true. I know. That's what I'm saying. But we finished it this year. Uh, actually, when we were at uh, when we were <laughs> in Maryland with our friends in Maryland, one night, uh, my wife and I just stayed up and watched the entire oh, okay. last season in yeah. one sitting. Yeah. And uh, I just love that show. Yeah. I love it. Uh, there's parts of it that, I mean, it gets uneven sometimes. And what you... was the last, uh, the last Winston prank that he pulled? Oh, I don't know. He but the, remember, you know the woman that yeah, he, he like kicked him out of their apartment. Yeah, that was right. it. Yeah. That was the funny part. He's like, yeah. <laughs> he did this whole anyway. Go on. But remember the, what? The, remember when Winston gets married? Yeah, and she like pulls pranks and everything, and she's uh-huh. a nightmare. Yeah, that that actress plays Michael, the lead character on Star Trek Discovery. Oh, ah, so, oh right, you know, yeah, they tie in. So yeah. anyway, we we finally. I mean, we we you started watching it. New Girl like right when it came out. Like we mm-hmm. watched the pilot like when it aired, and we're always big fans of them. We kind of got away from it, but right. finally like finished it all. This d- d- any guesses on the the last? I, this is a series I complained about constantly. I mean, now I'm. Kind I don't of know. In. I don't know. It's Titans. Oh, I don't remember you complaining about it. Oh yes, I remember you complaining about how gruesome it was. Yeah. But it always seemed like you liked everything else besides that's, the neck snapping and the bone yes, crunching. That's pretty much true. That's pretty okay. much true. Titans, which is uh, we have here in our collection, it's on the DC app. Yeah, um, we have Titans follows, and Doom Patrol. Yeah, it follows Dick Grayson and and the other Titans. Mm-hmm. It's a really well cast show. Mm-hmm. I think it's a really somebody came in like they've returned season one and they're like, "Can I get season two? I'm like, "Not out yet, man." Yeah. And so they were just like they were in it. Yeah. But season 2 I think it really mm-hmm. it, it's season 1 was kind of getting everybody together and you know like mm-hmm. some of the classic titans like Donna Troy and, and that others man. were not uh, right. <laughs> we're not like part of the main right. like core group. And now and it's so, like everybody. Yeah, season 2 you have kind of the like the OG Connor? T- you have the OG titans uh-huh. and then you have like the newer yeah. titans and they're all kind of like working together. And so mm-hmm. it always has a compelling mystery. Mm. Like I said the cast is strong and it's just it's it's a well done Does show. Does it have one villain that everybody talks about for 23 episodes? No. Okay. I I mean I know Too that bad. you're making fun of that trend, but it does yeah. it does sort of have that with Slade, but mm. it's more like Slade is kind of in the background. He yeah. doesn't really it's not every episode. It's not like this is the episode where we get Slade, you know. Yeah. It's just He's there. He's their Magneto. Yeah. He's their Shredder. Exactly. Uh, so that's those Those are my top favorite TV this year. There's others. Mm. There's others. Yeah. I guess I like Stranger Things season three more than season two. I've only seen season two, but I I mean, I've seen season one and two, but uh-huh. I enjoyed season two. We uh-huh. watched that this year. Oh, really liked I it. it. Always, always happy to see Paul Reiser yeah. get work. So there you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, he's getting mad about you. I know. Season eight? Oh, no. Is it? I don't, I don't even know. know. I don't know. Yeah, but that's a Spectrum original. There's no way to get yeah, it. I, I mean, you'll never see that show. What do you got? Favorite movies? You want to talk movies? Sure, let's do movies. Okay. This, give, mo- give this me year one. for movies was rough. Didn't like them? I, a lot of movies just either let me down or were just straight up bad. How, what, how Did you like the superhero movies of this year? Captain Marvel, Shazam, Endgame, Spider-Man, X-Men, Glass, Oh, yeah. Uh, Did you like Glass? No, I didn't like Glass. Oh, sorry. I'm ready for Glass to be on your list, and then I'm going to pick something that you hate that somehow offended you to your core, and then I'm going to say I loved it. Okay. Uh, let's, let's you know, before we get into this, let's, well, I let's mean, talk superhero I was just talking movies. about, like, uh, like X-Men, like Godzilla, like Detective Pikachu, like Aladdin and Lion King. Just It just felt very, like, I'm not usually one to complain about sequels or remakes or something, because yeah. I'm like, there's room for everything. But this year, it just, it felt exhausting. It felt, it just was too much. And it was too much just mediocrity. It all felt like everything was so middle line. Like, I liked Detective Pikachu, but it never, like, rose to the challenge. And I liked X-Men more than most, but at the same time, it was still kind of, you know, like, boy, here we are. 
And there were just... I, I did enjoy Dark Phoenix a lot more than I expected to. Yeah. I'll say that. I yeah. think it's some really cool. The opening sequence is great. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of good things going in that movie. And like Godzilla, I, like I was just, I was ready for Godzilla to be the movie of the year for me. And it was just like, oh, this is fine. This to me was maybe like the worst superhero year in a while. It wasn't great. I didn't. I mean, people will disagree with us because I liked Endgame less than everybody else. I was fine with Endgame, but I certainly didn't love it. Yeah. I felt the same about Captain Marvel. You know, I yeah. feel like I need to see it again. Um, same with Spider-Man Far From Home. I just, it just didn't leave a big impact on me, and I hated Shazam. So, hmm. yeah. Spider-Man Far From Home is on the first on my list. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, I told you that we saw it in a really we saw it on the Fourth of July, uh-huh. and there was fireworks going. We were at an outdoor yeah. thing, and that so was it all was Mysterio like, working though. Yeah, pretty much. It was yeah. it was like weird. It was a silent film with uh, explosions. So I guess Spider Man Far From Home is my favorite superhero movie of the year. That's fair. It, I thought it was. Uh, I think it was. Pr- well, okay. So, <laughs> uh, Spider Man Enter the Spider Verse was was like the best Spider Man movie since Spider Man Two, but. Uh, I really liked Far From Home. It kind of took all the things I liked from Homecoming and also took out some of the things I didn't like. Or or it took the things I didn't like and made them likable. Mm. So like I enjoyed all the for the most part the Iron Man stuff, mm-hmm. even though not that like last thing where it's like, I'm Iron Man Junior. Right. I, I want less of that. But I liked Mysterio. Yeah. A lot. Well, you know I what I'll, what the, I'll give that movie is mm-hmm. that it's a lot of the, the the Mysterio sequences, a lot of the scenes in mm-hmm. that are, I feel like some of the most like true to the comic page mm-hmm. adaptation of Spider Man we've yeah. ever seen. I just uh, it also it's the first time since Spider Man Two and you know Spider Man uh, Enter the Spider Verse where I felt like I was actually engaged during like the action scenes mm-hmm. because for the past couple Spider Man movies it's all been very like middle of the road. There hasn't been anything that I felt that has been like super exciting yeah uh and so like spider-man fighting a bunch of drones i thought was visually pretty mm-hmm. exciting so anyway did you miss jamie fox did you want him to be there? no i did not miss jamie okay. fox i did i was kind of surprised michael keaton didn't show up yeah i was too so maybe uh maybe next time so all right what, what's the first one on your list then oh boy okay what? or on. eight or no no i'm next sorry couple. i just i clicked away okay so well then the next one on my list is Alita Battle Angel. And I'm not just saying that to bother my wife, who hated the movie. I remember that. But I had a good time at it. And it was one of those movies I didn't think was going to be any good. And I was like, this just feels like a live action anime. And I I'm saw, digging it. I saw Ion Flux Oof. in like 2004. Um, <laughs> I just thought it was like the action I thought was pretty cool. Okay. And I liked the world. I liked the character, uh, Alita. I thought she was cool. I liked uh, whatever his name is from all those uh, movies where he plays the bad guy. He was also Blofeld at one point. Spoiler. Christoph Waltz. I like Christoph Waltz. Yeah, it's a uh, big spoiler. Uh, yeah. Spoiler for anyone who doesn't know anything. <laughs> who can't see twists coming from yeah. three miles away. Uh, my wife hated it, and I was shocked because uh, like, we were leaving the theater. I was like, did you like it? She's like, no. I'm like, uh-oh. And it, it did become a fight. But did I, it? Yeah. Wow. Well, we hadn't liked the same movie for a while. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I had a good time. Okay. Go on. It was All one right. of the surprises of the year, I guess. Um, well, I talked about this one recently, so I'm just going to start with this, and that's uh, Motherless Brooklyn oh, yeah. with Ed Norton and uh, Alex I'm Baldwin. Sh- th- their marketing has been terrible then because I did not even know it had been out. I thought it was still to come. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I don't think I think it was more of like an indie kind of release. Oh, I don't think it was in okay. every major theater. We saw it in a weird theater. Yeah. But I loved that. I thought, it, right. was, I thought it was really good. I think mm-hmm. Ed Norton, um, while I don't know if I'd want to hang out with Ed Norton, I, <laughs> no, I no. think that his... Uh, yeah, you know, I think he's good at making movies, and I think that this was a, a great mm-hmm. performance. And it, a well should we stru- watch Rounders? A well structured movie. I don't know what that is, but oh, that's sure. the poker movie that he did in the nineties. Are we going to watch Max. that Ashton Kutcher, Steve Jobs movie? No, stop it. What? Why not? Oh my word! You know why? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can, do, should we explain it? Eric wanted no. me to watch Jobs with him once. Is that what it's called? N- no, I never wanted to watch Jobs. Yeah, I wanted to go see Steve Jobs right. because I like Michael Fassbender and I like the director. Yeah, and you liked Aaron Sorkin. Yeah, I asked you like, do you want to see that movie? And you said no. Yeah, so I didn't see it. But I see, I mistook. I didn't understand that it was an invite. I thought it was just more like, do you want to see that movie? And I was like, no, I don't really want to see that. Mm-hmm. But. <laughs> It was misconstrued. And anyway, and so it's been a so source I watched of the movie, and then other times I was like, hey, do you want to watch this movie? And then Nick has also said no again. And he now. He tried to get me to watch the movie after the initial. 
I had, yes. I'll watch After it. After I watched it on DVD, I like brought it over to your house a few times. Or Let's did watch you it. come No, it's too late now. Now it's come to the point where it's been so many years we just can't watch the movie together. That's why I think we should watch the Ashton Kutcher. I'm Steve never Jobs watching movie. that movie. Save your second film. Or finish talking <laughs> about Motherless Brooklyn. <laughs> Motherless Brooklyn was great. Yeah. The second Did you one, read the book? No, I didn't. Are you going to? I you know, it's set in the, the book's in the nineties. It's set in the nineties and I just don't, yeah. I'm not so interested in that. Yeah. I think that takes away a lot of I don't know. You, you, a lot of you the feel of it, like if you're going to read the book, the character is going to be talking about like, boy, I got to solve this mystery, but first I got to finish this crisscross song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's two crisscross missions <laughs> sure, in the yeah, last well, like, got, month. You have to cross every Chris. Yeah, you're right. So, you. uh, my another one for me was Destination Wedding with Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have no comment on it. I have no comment because I haven't seen it. Oh okay. well, here's the thing. Uh -huh. Okay, it's it's uh, it's a weird setup, right? It's just them. They're the him and Renona are the yeah. only ones who talk. Yeah, it's like it's, a stage play. It's, exactly. That's exactly yeah. what it is. I we were watching this and I was like, this has to be a play. There's uh -huh. no way it's not. And I and it's not. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a screenplay. But um, for me, that really worked because uh -huh. that's the kind of play that I like. It's anyway, funny. Where you have it is funny. Okay, it is funny. But I think what what kicks it over because it's not like the script is flawless or anything. Right. It's not. You know. But what really I really like to watch like actors and good performances, mm -hmm. and I like to watch like things. It just feels so natural, uh -huh. you know. Like their chemistry is so real and so natural that, mm -hmm. like, even if it's not like, even if they're set, because there were parts of where I was like, well, that's kind of hokey. But uh -huh. their natural chemistry is just right. so good and compelling, and and I'm already like sort of predisposed to like that like tight, intimate like play mm -hmm. feel. That for me and my wife, I mean, we both just love this. So, mm. yeah, but I don't think it's gotten great reviews. But I do kind of think that you would like it. Maybe. All right. We'll never know. Like. <laughs> 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 um, that was madness. Uh, I guess I put Dr. Sleep on my, my really? list. Yeah. By Stephen King. No, not... The not book. the book, Dr. Sleep, oh, okay. which I did like more than The Shining. No, yeah. the movie. Yeah. Just because... Um, um. <laughs> no, it it was thoughtful. I liked uh, the performances in it. Yeah. It was sometimes too dark. Yeah. I liked the ending. Um. I felt like it's just more of my my kind of jam. Yeah. In terms of story and horror, I guess I don't know. It doesn't really feel the yeah. movie doesn't feel the mov movie feels even less horror than the book. No, yeah, it does. Movie's gruesome though. It is. Oh yeah. There's there's one extended sequence oh my that gosh, I, like, I, I had to leave. I mean, couldn't even handle it. Um, but uh -huh. that theater we saw it had sparkling water, and that settled my tummy. That's true. So that was a. Um, but I just Doctor Sleep. Yeah, I just thought it was like very well filmed. Nothing. It was never. It never felt rushed, but it no. also never felt long. And I think when you're when you're doing something where you're playing with a mm -hmm. film, like whether you like the film or not, The Shining is iconic. Yeah. So when when you play in that world, and so. So blatantly, mm -hmm. you know, when when you were like, "We are doing this," right? That doesn't always work, and it could really have powerfully backfired. So yeah. the fact that it didn't, I think, yeah. is a testament to Ewan McGregor, yeah, and the writing and directing, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know what? And Doctor Sleep is kind of like The Irishman, and that they're both long, thoughtful, but they don't feel like they're dragging, right? And you're not watching, you're not checking your watch. Is The Irishman on your list? Yeah. As, it, as one of the best movies you've seen, yeah. I really, I was on the fence. I almost put it, and then I didn't. But oh. I think it, I think it counts. Let's talk about the Irishman, okay, a little bit more, okay. Did you like it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I told you I liked it. You yeah. were mad at me. I was not because we came out of the theater. Oh and you were like, you, "Did you like it?" I was like, "Yes." Yeah, but that's what right. I was, I was still shaking off the like last twenty minutes, oh, yes, which were okay. just a depressing right. yes, hole they, of yep. darkness. Yeah, um, and so, yeah, that's I. I don't know if I'm ever going to rewatch The Irishman yeah. at three and a half hours or longer. Yeah, with that with that pacing and all that Jimmy Hoffa stuff. Yeah, um, but it was you know I definitely recognize that it is good. Yeah, it's very if good. If there's one, if there's one thing that I would say about it is mm -hmm. that the some of the when they're when you're calling on these like legendary actors who are in their seventies, I want to say, mm -hmm. to play like twenty five year old characters, mm -hmm. it's there were some cringe worthy moments, yeah. I think. There's there's a scene where where one of Robert De Niro's character gets into a fight and he's just moving so slowly mm. after the grocery store. 
He's just like, and take oh, yeah. that, and take that. And it was like, <laughs> no one couldn't yeah. just speed that up a little bit or <laughs> get a body double. I don't know. Mm. So I thought there was a couple awkward things with the, with the de-aging stuff. But overall, I, yeah, you're right. I mean, I didn't check my watch once. I didn't kick the seat in front of me. No. <laughs> no. I just ate Jelly Babies and <laughs> watched the show. Yeah. Jelly Babies. So I really yeah. liked it. I, I, I liked it very much. All right. What's on your list then? I just listed two. Oh, okay. Uh, Book Smart. Oh, yeah. I really like Booksmart. I thought it was funny and clever mm-hmm. and well-made, well-acted. It's definitely funnier than uh, the one they compare it to. Superbad? Oh, my gosh. I don't think Superbad is a fun or good movie at no, all. Uh, no. I hated that yeah. movie. But, no, I thought Booksmart was really well done. Mm-hmm. I, I liked that quite yeah. a bit. Did you see it? Yeah. You liked I, it? I liked it. My my wife thought it was very funny. I, there was stuff that I really liked, and then, I don't know, It it was... High school stuff just doesn't click with yeah. me. So when people are like, oh, I'm so concerned if people care about me in high school, I'm like, don't, mm-hmm. don't care. Mm-hmm. That's your Doesn't public matter. service message. Yeah. Uh, no. So like the high school, just because it was like that high school center thing, it just didn't have much for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I thought it was funny. I thought the two leads were funny. The one girl has been in other things. Um, the one who finds out the truth. I can't remember any of the character's name. The one who finds out that everybody's going to like all these great schools, even though they've partied all year. Uh, Caitlin Deaver? Maybe. Okay. She's been in other things. She's very funny. Okay. So she was in uh, the What You Do in the Shadows, and she was in Lady Bird. Oh, oh, no, no. That's that's Beanie. I can't remember her name. Beanie. Something. Beanie's the one I'm talking Beanie's about. She's very name. funny. Okay. Yeah. The yeah, other girl looks funny. like uh, Kitty Pride. Yeah, I could see that. Ellen Page, you mean? No, I just mean she looks like she oh, could be Kitty Pride. Because the they recast Kitty, Kitty, Kitty Pride so many times. Yeah. So okay, <laughs> all right. So book smarts for me. What else uh-huh. you got? Well, I, I've listed. I listed four. Oh, you did it. Okay. Yeah. Um, then I'm also going to say Twenty One Bridges. Oh uh, yeah. This is uh, uh, it's a it's a mystery, but it's it's set over the course of about five hours. The whole plot takes place. It has an amazing score that just keeps you like right in the zone. It's its pacing is kind of relentless, and I think that it's um, the that the music, the acting, the directing. It's just a really it's a well-made movie that puts you in the perfect zone, and you're just there from start to finish. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you haven't seen it, I, I would definitely recommend 21 Bridges. Nice. I guess my favorite movie of the year was Ad Astra by default. Oh. Okay. So uh, the Brad Pitt kind of Tommy Lee Jones movie. I haven't seen it. I've heard mixed things. Oh. But you 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 liked it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ad Astra was right up my alley, just kind of the uh, slow, thoughtful sci-fi that I do like to meet some slow thoughtful uh, sci-fi. That was abstract uh, at a lot of times. I would just show you. Uh, <laughs> that would just show you very like abstract moments uh-huh. and uh, with like a monologue going on with some nice music and stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, kind of a bit of Solaris is in there. A bit of sunshine is in there. Did you ever watch that Sean Penn space show? No. <sighs> No. There was no payoff in that oh, show. I don't remember what it was called because it was so <laughs> boring. But my wife and I watched every one. We just kept being like, well, we're this far in. Surely yeah. something's going to happen. And it never no, did. No, I didn't watch it. Last time we made fun of Sean Penn, though, and Malik yelled at us. So we have to not. We can't make fun For of Sean what? Penn. For what? For making fun of Sean Penn. And what? I think maybe it was even in this. Oh. I said yeah. he looked like a six-year-old. Maybe you said he looked like a mm-hmm. six-year-old lifeguard. <laughs> Like Sean Penn is like when you blow out the speakers in your car and then you just deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Sorry, Malik, if you're listening. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Ad Astra is uh, was probably my favorite movie of the year. Okay. So. Well, I don't think my wife liked it because it was uh, too depressing for her. I see. So, But I hit you right in your depressing sweet spot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is de- space stuff like that is depressing. Yeah. It's like, boy, why would anybody go to space? But it's definitely one of, uh, it goes up there with like, those really cool sci-fi films that I enjoy. Okay. So, uh, the last one on my list is not my favorite movie of the year. I, I wasn't doing a countdown. Oh, okay. But um, I thought Toy Story 4 was great. Yeah, Toy Story 4 was great. I was, I, you know, I'd only recently seen Toy Story 3. I know. Like, we were, yeah. we watched them in the same day, actually. We had a little, like, Toy Story marathon. Yeah, the day before, you were finally given a heart. Is that right? Yeah, I was yeah. given a heart for the <laughs> first time. Um, <laughs> so I thought Toy Story 3 was fine, you know, but mm-hmm. I was also like, how do you ever make a sequel to that? Yeah, like, that's it, the question. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't know why they did it. I mean, I guess it's just money, but mm-hmm. um, I was actually really glad that they did because yeah. I thought that Toy Story 4 worked as such a good... Like, the other ones are ensemble movies, and where mm-hmm. I feel like Toy Story 4 is really like a Woody spinoff, yeah. you know? And I I just thought it was a great epilogue and probably yeah. my favorite of the series. Whoa. So, yeah. Uh, I put Dolomite as my name also <laughs> on the list because I actually found 
like the story to be really inspiring. Yeah. I, it's the line specifically where Eddie Murphy, he's trying to get a movie and everything, and he says, nobody's going to put me in a movie but me, mm-hmm. so I'm going to do it. And I was just like, that's great. Yeah. I mean, the movie is so crude. Oh, yes. It has some of the filthiest language and lines that I've heard in a long time. Maybe ever. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm being honest, I might be. <laughs> and, you know, it's not perfect film. I think it's funnier than... Uh, the people we watched it with yeah. thought. But yeah, I thought like just the I, the story of this guy who just like, it, he he would just not be sidelined and it, like everything he did was just a step to do something even yeah. bigger. I, I, I really liked it. Yeah, I did too. I think so. I think my complaint there would be like it, it felt more like a drama with comedy elements and I just yeah. wasn't prepared for I just for think that. Eddie Murphy was just enjoyable like, oh, yeah. the whole time. Yeah. So I, Agreed. yeah, I... <laughs> I enjoyed it. I would not suggest it to my mother. Mm-hmm. I would not suggest it to a few people, but mm-hmm. um, for the most part, like that that whole, nobody's going to put me in the movie but me. I was like, man, what am I doing? You're going to be in a movie now? I don't know. I'll go see it. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> it's a drama. I'm playing this guy who uh, used to be my boss uh-huh. uh, before I quit and started okay. doing making movies. Really? Yeah. Huh. So Was he a nice guy or... Uh, that's Funny. it for the viewer. Oh, okay. I think. I'm, right. I'm going to be playing the role as accurately as I can. Let me ask you this question. Yeah. A few years back, you bought me the Super Sons graphic novel for uh-huh. Christmas, even though I didn't want it, and uh-huh. told you that I didn't want it, right? And that I wouldn't read it. And you uh-huh. bought it for me anyway. Uh huh. And then I returned the favor by buying you the Whoopi Goldberg film, uh, <laughs> Theodore Rex. Right. Okay. Was that was that funny? I guess. Okay. But you ended up liking Super Sons. Did you end up liking Theodore Rex? <laughs> Did anybody? Would it be funny? Look, if, it means I don't have to pay to watch it for three nice things. Would it be funny if I got you the Ashton Kutcher, Steve Jobs movie on no. Blu-ray for Christmas? Would not be and funny. And you opened it up. No. And you're like, what's this going to be? No. And you think maybe it's The reason Shazam. why it wouldn't be funny is because it would actually be digging up some old wounds. Okay. There was no wounds with Super Sons. Okay. Follow-up question. <laughs> Do you know how to cancel an order <laughs> on the internet? <laughs> All right. Let's look at our top favorite books. Is that... I feel like I said that weird. Top, top favorite top books. Favorites. I guess it's I guess it's yeah. redundant. If anything, yeah. is top favorite plural? Let's look at our <laughs> top favorite best choice. Yeah, this was a rough year for me. I, I gotta know. tell you what. I know, Brohim. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, then I guess my the thing I enjoyed most reading this year was love poems for married people. Yeah, yeah. We talked about that on our best books of the favorite right. books of the decades, With Malik. Um, which was just very funny and uh, was poetry I can get behind. Um, I want that to be on the cover. <laughs> this is poetry I can get behind, Eric Mickles. You think people will look at that like, oh, he hates poetry. He doesn't get it at all. Yeah. Uh, but then also I really liked Armor by John Steakley just because it just went in directions I had no clue about and was just really a crazy military sci-fi I was not expecting. So Okay. All right, so that's two. Uh-huh. You've already laid down the gauntlet on two. Yeah. Um, this one's so old that I'm going to say it, and then I already said it was old, so you can't make fun of me for saying mm-hmm. it, but The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we did this for our Banned Books book club, and I just uh. never read it. You know, yeah. I didn't really know what it was about. I uh-huh. just It was one that I never read, but I read it, and I loved it, and we had a great book club discussion Next on it. favorite book of 2019, Catcher in the Rye. Yeah. <laughs> I can't... I mean, that armor book's from the 80s. Yeah. So. And stupid. <laughs> just I'm just kidding. Darn it. I'm just kidding. Hey, remember how... What if I buy you the Steve Jobs I, biography? <laughs> Would that be funny? Because it's a book. It's mm-hmm. a callback, but it's not a direct. But he's not like... He's kind of a jerk. Not a great guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we'll find out when we watch Though the I do Ashton think Kutcher there movie. is... I do think there is merit to somebody who can present and like market things. Yeah. If, even though he might not necessarily be able to create the things. Mm-hmm. I think there is... I, the the idea of a producer, I think sometimes we all make fun of, but mm-hmm. there's there's value in that. Definitely. So, all right. Well, Catcher in the Rye was one of mine. You already uh-huh. did two, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna give you a second one here. Here we go. The oh boy. Loneliest girl in the universe. That's on my list. By Lauren James. Uh, you go back and listen to our interview with Lauren James, but we do spoil the crap out of this book. Yeah. So make sure that you read the book yeah. first. But um, this is a, this is a sci-fi novel mm-hmm. about a. A girl on her own, yeah. uh, on a spaceship going to a colony. Yeah, let's go to like a colony world. Yeah, she she's she's got a colony ship. Yeah, it was her parents and her. Um, but she's the only one. She's left, the only one left. Sort of so she's that flying out, out there. Yep. But another ship is soon to be meeting up with her. Yeah, and it's kind of a love story. So that gives a little bit of a hope, and it's just uh, it's it's it. 
doesn't end up being the book that I was expecting yeah. it to be. And the way that that develops, I think, is really well done. You, sh- you should listen to our interview because she was even like, I never get to talk about the yeah. the spoilers and stuff. <laughs> right. So this is nice because yeah. we were just like, we have to spoil it. Yeah, it was like, we, couldn't, we could not like get around talking about yeah. this book. So we, we yeah. made sure people know. I don't but care about anyway, spoilers. Lonely Girl in the Universe by Lauren James right. was one for me. Cool. Did you already listen to? That was my That was Catcher and Rye and Loneliest yeah. Girl, yeah. But Loneliest Girl was my three. Okay. So I'll also say All Systems Red by Martha Wells was pretty cool. We also talked to Martha Wells. You Go sure back did. and listen to the Martha Wells interview. And then I also read Wonder and Refugee for like the kids' books clubs. Right. And so yeah, I those that. were ones that I was like, oh, these are good. Refugee put me in a bad bad mood let me tell you a lot of things put you in a bad mood yeah but refugee was too relevant you must learn to govern your passions Let's I'm start with the most it. I ever. <laughs> <laughs> all right so <laughs> you're finished then that's your top five yeah i also marked down uh evolution of claire and andromeda evolution for being the i can't believe these aren't michael Crichton. stop making these books that's a special award that's a special that's award a special because award. it was like these two books yeah Covering these Michael Crichton books, though Evolution of Claire had no intention to be like the Jurassic Park right. book sequel. Right. It was the movie's adaptation. But boy, those two in Artemis put me in a bad mood. Andy Weir's Artemis? Andy Weir's Artemis Ooh. gets the recognition for worst book of the year. Ooh. That's pretty fair. Well, worst book that I read this year, Institute's probably the worst book of 2019. Huh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So. I've read some bad ones. Yeah. I mean, that uh, Artemis and Institute are right up there. I read three Barbara Hamley novels that I hated. Sorry, man. Planet of Twilight, Children of the Jedi, yeah. and a Star Trek book called Crossroads. We were right. doing these for a book club, and it was like, I don't know why we did it. I guess we were just, <laughs> I guess we were just committed, and we were like, let's just see it through. It can't, they can't all be this bad, right? Because we read one <laughs> called Ghost Walker, which was by Barbara Hamley, and was amazing. We hated every other one. It was, uh, mm. it was a real punishment. Yeah, they, but if you go to Institute on Goodreads. It's got like 4.05. I don't understand that. It doesn't make sense to I me. don't accept it. Uh, let's see. What else? What else do I have here? Uh, I've talked about this one in the past, but American Marriage by T.R.E. Jones was just, uh, was just a whirlwind. It was just a book mm. that was like... Oh, right. The husband goes to prison. For something that he didn't do. Right. But it just ruins their lives. Right. And then like... And then they're It's marriage. one of those things where there's no, there's no good resolution. Mm-hmm. Like there's no way... They Is it a just, book club book? No, it wasn't. No, is it going to be? Oh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it would be a good one to discuss. I I want to say it won the it was it was either a one or it was a finalist of the Women's Prize this year, but I actually I remember it being a nominee. I think it won, but anyway, um the thing is like this this happens to him where he goes to jail and it's like it's not his fault, mm-hmm. it's not his wife's fault, and even even if that can be corrected, you just you can't undo it. And right. It, and so it just brings up a lot of like a lot of discussion. It's very thought-provoking. So, mm. check that out. Um, this book's a little older as well, but I read The Goldfinch by Donna Tart. Oh yeah. So I've had this forever because it's a brick of a book. I mean yeah. it's a, it's one of the it's very long. Yeah. Um and I I was I loved it. I mean mm-hmm. I was just I was in it all the way. And it it you change the setting so much because mm-hmm. it, I don't know if you are you familiar with the premise at all. Just from the movie trailer. Okay. <laughs> I mean there's there's basically there's an attack in a museum yeah. early on and a kid kinda ends up on his own. Yeah. And, you know, finding mm-hmm. where he's gonna settle, you go through these different stages of maybe this is it, maybe this is mm-hmm. it. And it uh so it's almost like you it's almost like a collection of yeah. small books. But it's I, one of those I just books that great. has a reputation of being unfilmable. And then the movie it maybe is. proves it. That's the thing. I mean, it really is. I I don't know how you do it. I don't. Right. It, I mean, I think I think if you were going to put it on screen, it would have to be a miniseries. You mm. just can't. Do yeah, it. it's weird they didn't do that. Then it is mm. weird. It is weird. I I would yeah. never adapt that to yeah. a movie. But and I haven't seen the movie yet. Have you or has anyone? Uh, it did bomb and it got pretty bad reviews. Yeah. So no, sense. we have it in our collection though. You can watch it. Finally, uh, we were just talking about this a few weeks ago on the Goodreads Choice Awards, but uh, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And this this is about the girl who plays uh, Ray. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ray in Star Wars. Okay. She, uh, yep, Daisy Ridley. No, this is again. If if you didn't, if you're not familiar with this book, it, it's about a band called the Six, um, and they're doing fine. And then there's a single singer, Daisy Jones, uh-huh. also doing fine. Uh-huh. And then they kind of come together for this one thing. And when they come together, it's like magic. And so the book uh-huh. is the book is just a series of interviews with people talking about. Um, basically the whole journey of this band. And it's mm-hmm. got the song lyrics in the back and everything. It feels so real. Right. It feels like you're reading a real biography. Mm. And um, I just think it's very well done. It's it's very compelling. Are you going to read this? 
Probably. It's on my to-read right. list. Well, I think it'd be worth it. Yeah. So those are, those are my top Did you talk about the, the making of rumors? I think you asked that last no, time. No, last time I asked about the making of Tusk. Oh, uh, okay. All right. <laughs> uh, no. No, they didn't. Right. They didn't talk about that. All right. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, you know. Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> what are you, Alpha? <laughs> no, I'm just. Alpha, I, what yeah, was yeah, your yeah, favorite yeah. book of the year? <laughs> What's your favorite uh, Power Rangers book you read this year? Uh, the Green Ranger book that I read then. Did you the also Power read the, the did Dragon. you read Justice League? Uh, Power Rangers? No. You bought this for our collection, but you didn't even read it But yourself. I read that Green, the Green you Ranger one. Like the Green Old Ranger. Man Green Ranger. You don't even like the Green I know, Ranger. but I like that comic. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, All right. That would be, that All right. would be a, yeah, uh, my my ambivalence there when you said I sounded like Alpha was because it was a year that the, making the list was not soups easy. Yeah, so rough year. I don't know. Last year I just feel like I had a ton of books that were jockeying for top position, mm. and this year was a little bit more of a slog. But yeah. that happens. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna do? I don't know. Okay, read that Witcher book I've been waiting for. Yeah, yeah. Finally, that's coming. Yeah. When does The Witcher come out? Uh, it is out already. Came out December twentieth. The series, yeah. Oh, cool. All so. right. Um, I guess that's. I guess that's it. I wrote some games. Oh, you want to do games? Sure, yeah. let's do it. Okay. Uh, by amount of time Hi. played, okay. Civilization Six gets the award and also gets the award from last year because I just. It, I mean, you you talked about knowing a person in a uh, college who played Civilization, mm-hmm. and those those things are just marathons. I've been I put so much time into Civilization Six. It's on so on Steam, the client that I play a lot of my games on. Okay, uh, you'll get achievements and stuff, and they'll show you like the percentage of people who got them. And like some of them that I've gotten now are like four percent of people who played Civilization Six have also received this award. I'm like, oh wow, uh, maybe that's not a big deal. But I think it's a big <laughs> deal. It sounds like it. Um, also, I've been playing a lot of Jurassic World Evolution. Not the evolution of Claire, and not the Andromeda Strain okay. evolution. Jurassic the Andro- World. The Andromeda. It's basically strain. just a park builder with. The, the dinosaurs. You're making Jurassic Parks, basically. Uh, and it's really just a digital aquarium with dinosaurs in it. But I tell you what. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't understand. The dinosaur... Games. Because you just you just make the thing, and then you just watch the dinosaurs know, walk I mean, around. I know this makes me sound like a grandpa, but I don't understand why that would be fun. Well, it's basically like Sim City or Roller Coaster Tycoon. Yeah, I don't get why those would be fun. Okay, anyway, the dinosaurs are just so well designed, and the sound is so good that whenever I hatch a t-rex and release it into its uh park <laughs> okay i i have to watch it leaving the uh the creation center because it just stomps in that roar oh boy i tell you what on as i'm dying when i lay dying and my vision is just a bunch of different colors and white lights and people are telling me stuff but i can't hear them anymore i'm gonna hear that t-rex roar as i enter the next world wow uh but <laughs> and this is a cheat. I played Link to the Past again, the Super Nintendo okay. Legend of Zelda. Right. So good. Any year I play that game, it's going to be my game of the year. Uh, Doom 2016, Shovel Knight, and Dead Cells were also my favorite games of this year. Okay. Doom 2016, so fun. So fun. Just jump around. I've never played a single Doom. Oh. And Dead Cells. Oh, man. it's And Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight was just so good. And there's a free another free uh, expansion for it out. That's that I fun. still got to play. The uh, King of Cards. Everything about Shovel Knight has been a good time. I played a lot of Uncharted this year. You sure did. I did both Uncharted The Lost Legacy and Uncharted 4, yep. Thief's End. Uh, loved Thief's End. Thought yeah. it was great. Uncharted 4 Lost Legacy sort of helped with the uh, mm-hmm. withdrawal from, yeah. from being done. I also really loved Celeste. Yeah. A platforming, very challenging mm-hmm. game. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I wonder if you like Super Meat Boy. It's in the same kind of vein. IDK. Challenging. IDK. <laughs> My wife and I played through Overcooked 2. Yeah. That was a ton of fun. Yeah. Overcooked You're the one who fun. got me hooked on that. So thanks. Yeah. Overcooked is fun. You suggested that. It's a bunch of fun. Uh, and I started playing Spider-Man after, oh, after yeah. Uncharted, but I'm, I'm not very far in it. So yeah. I can't tell you much about that. Yeah. But, yep. With great processing power comes great still time requirement responsibility of is your that son. What, is that what you say? Yeah, that's what you say huh. when it comes to the Spider-Man game. When okay. you're bitten by a radioactive PS4 version that. of Spider-Man. All right. Well, so overall, how do you rate 2019 in, in books and media and movies? <sighs> C? I think I'm going to go C. C plus. It is, it is rough. I think TV was the best <laughs> of yeah, the things. That's, that's probably true. Uh, but you know what? I haven't seen every movie. I haven't seen Parasite. That's supposed to be super great. I didn't watch Marriage Story. There's a bunch of movies I haven't watched that, you know, might be the greatest films of this year. And also books and, you know, I, I'm i just so behind on everything and I haven't read 
I didn't read enough books this year. Like books, I spent so much time reading X Men. I didn't read enough yeah, books that's true. this year. That's true. Um, I mean, to each his own. Thank you. But I, so I, I felt kind of let down by that at the end of the year. I was like, oh man. I mean, I read enough. I read more books than like I used to as a kid and stuff. Like I still read like two books a month, but it was just kind of like, man, I can do better. Did you watch uh, that new Rambo movie with uh, no. Stallone? Have you no, seen any Rambo movies? I've seen the first one. I've never seen any. It's of good. Them. Is it? The first Rambo is good. You gonna watch them all? I'll watch the second one anyway. What about the third, fourth, fifth, sixth? No. Okay. Um, but yeah, all, even with TV, there's still a bunch of like great TV I haven't watched. There's just too much stuff all the time. And I've also been trying to like cut off the noise but from like, even like mm. my phone. I know I just listed a whole bunch of shows and everything that I watched, but I've, I've like deleted Twitter and all this other stuff off my uh, phone. And I've been kind of, this past couple of months, I've just been kept very much like, how much noise am I receiving? And how much, what am I actually doing? Hmm. Am I just like, I don't know. So you're having a reflective end of year. Yeah. Looking back. Yeah. Making some changes. Yeah. Okay. So. Good for you. Thanks, man. All right. Also, I read a whole bunch of Star Wars comics. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, uh, I mean, next week, what the world's our oyster. 2020. That's it's true. A, it's a new decade. It's a new decade. It's a new year. It's a new me. That's right. All right. Well, in the coming <laughs> weeks, we're going to be talking about most anticipated books of 2020. Yeah. Page to screen adaptations coming yeah. in the new year. And... We got to do a Lonely Hearts Book Club. Yeah. Because it's been a while. Are there other awards coming too? Oh, probably. I mean, yeah, we'll have to talk to the Oscars yeah. eventually. Yeah. But that's in February. That's right. Super that's Bowl. Right. Who's ever in the Super Bowl? M- come March. Come March when the Major League Soccer starts. Get ready. Get ready. There's a New England team, and I'm going to follow them. Look, and we're we g- did a whole soccer episode. That's as much soccer no, as I'm willing every, to do. Uh, w- once it happens. Disagree. Sorry. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in to the All the Book Show in 2019 and the many, many years before. And we look forward to podcasting for you in 2020. All right. We'll see you then. <laughs> Bye. Bye.